Hi guys and welcome to part 4 of Skyrim Mod Sanctuary. Now in this video I'm going to concentrate on mods that make the game look better, but there are literally hundreds if not thousands of mods that do that at the moment, so obviously I can't cover them all. So don't be upset if I don't cover your favourite. I will be doing other videos on making the game look better, I guarantee it. I'm going to be focusing on two mods, two big hitters, that change the lighting and the shades, etc. And it generally changes everything in the game, the way the game looks. And you should be warned, these mods will probably hit your performance. Now, depending on the mod and depending on your system, that performance hit does vary. And in actual fact, there have been reports that at least one of the mods improves your performance. And that is actually possible. But I wouldn't expect that. I think it's best if you, if you expect some performance loss, that way you're not disappointed. Now the first mod we're going to install is the Skyrim Enhanced Shaders. Now for Fallout New Vegas players, that name might sound familiar because of course there was the Fallout New Vegas Enhanced Shaders. And this is by the same author. Now, it adds a lot of visual effects. This is a major overhaul. Um, it adds what, if we look at the list here, it says enhanced adaptive bloom, high quality HLS cell sharpening, palette mapping, custom sun glare. There's, the list is just huge. There's, there's an absolute armada of effects added to this. Um, basically, though, you just have to see it to understand. Now, installing this mod is a little different from standard mods. It's a single file download. You download that. And once it's downloaded, just open it up and have a look inside. There are several folders. And each one is uh, like a different version of this mod almost. And we're only going to be de installing the default one for now. But there are other options if you want to get creative later on. There's also a PDF, a README, and this is a very detailed README with, with a full rundown of all the different effects and just generally a lot of information, including how to customize the mod, how to change the settings to your own liking. Now, to install this, you need to open up your Skyrim game folder. That's not the data folder, but the game folder. And the game folder is where you find the tesv.exe file. And you then open up the Skyrim Enhanced Shaders default in the downloaded archive. And you'll see five loose files. Copy those. And copy them into your game folder. It's as simple as that. Now there is also a data folder. And that contains a sun glare effect. Now you can install that in one of two ways. You can either simply copy and again copy it into here and hit yes to overwrite and that will simply add this to the correct place. Or you can actually create a package for your package manager if you want. It's completely up to you how you do, how you do this. But if you want to install this as a package so that it makes it uninstallation easier, and I usually do, anything that goes in the data folder I like to install via the package manager or the Nexus Mod Manager, the way to do it is instead of copying it across into here, I'm going to copy it to my desktop. I am then going to add to archive and I'm going to call this the Enhanced Shaders Sun Glare Ra. And then I start up the Nexus Mod Manager, go to my mods, create a mod from file, and I have to change this to all files and my enhanced shaders. This one, and then activate. Now, that might seem a little over the top and a bit unnecessary, and maybe it is, but now I've got control over this one file, and I always like to keep control of everything that is in the data folder. Everything that's in the data folder, I like to be installed with the mod manager so that I can uninstall it at a later date. I would like to have done that with these five files 
but you can't do it, I'm afraid. It's, uh, it's not possible to do that with the mod manager currently. But that's it. The mod is now completely installed. So here we are in game, and this is with the enhanced shaders. Now, you can actually turn the shaders on and off by pressing the Shift F12 key. And I will turn them off now so you can see the difference. So this is off, this is the vanilla look, and as you can see, everything's... I don't know, the lighting's just a little bit too unrealistic. As soon as you switch it on, the shadows become a little bit nicer, the colours a little bit more vibrant. All in all, just a very nice visual effect. And again, off. And then on. So as you can see, very nice improvement. Now, there is a performance hit. It varies machine to machine. But for me, the performance hit's quite noticeable. But other people are reporting only a few percent performance hit. It, it does vary. So you do need a good machine to run this. And I'm not sure what the best setup is. But as you can see, it looks very nice indeed. Now I think the effect is especially noticeable in shadows. So if I turn it off now, this is the default. And this is our, this is with it on. And as you can see the shadows are just so so much better. Anything that's in the shade looks noticeably darker. Whereas if I turn it off, it's pretty hard to tell the difference between things that are in the shade and not sometimes. And if we look at actual NPCs, or in this case the player character. Again, this is with the shaders on. Now, watch when I turn it off. This will be vanilla. Now, especially if you notice things like the underarm areas and the biceps, where usually there'd be quite a lot of shadow. In the vanilla game, it's pretty boring. It's pretty bland. But if I turn it on, if I turn the enhanced shaders on, just slightly better shading, slightly more realistic. Now, whereas if you look at the shoulders, very brightly lit by the sun. So you just get a, a, just a generally an overall better effect. Very nice, very nice indeed. Now the second mod I'm going to show you is an alternative to the enhanced shaders um, and you cannot use these both at the same time. And this mod is the FXAA Post Process Injector. Now it has, once again, a host of post-processing effects like Bloom, Sharpen, etc. And as such, it does have an inevitable performance drop. Although, you'll probably find this one won't hit your system quite as hard as the enhanced shaders. But again, it is completely dependent upon the system um, that you're using as to how well it will perform. Now, to install it, there are two different ways. You can either download the automatic installer or the manual install. Now again, like the enhanced shaders, you don't download this with a manager, you download it manually. Now I'm going to download both files to show you both ways. Now the manual installation is a simple archive with four different folders in it and each one is a different preset. So if I go to say preset one, it has a whole, whole bunch of files and a folder. And to install this, you're literally going to extract these files and place them in your game folder. Again, just like the enhanced shaders, not in your data folder, but in the game folder itself, where you find the TES, there we go, TESV.exe file. So these files would go in here. And that would literally do the installation for you. Now, if you don't want to do that, you don't want to do the manual copying, this file here, the Post Processing Injector Installer, is even simpler. And this is the way I actually recommend installing this mod. Simply double click on it, and it gives you a quick description of the different presets. Preset 1, medium sharpening, medium bloom, technicolor, medium saturation, etc. Um, now I'm actually going to pick preset 2 which is no sharpening. And the reason I'm doing that is I have a very sharp monitor, a really sharp monitor. And so I find any of the sharpening settings to be a little, um, well, a little overkill. But you might want to play around with the different settings to figure out which suits you. But I'm going for preset two. 
click next. Obviously, I'm going to select the preset two now, and then the next. It asks where the um, game is found. It usually finds it for you. There it is. And as you see here, some files got installed. Here we are. There is also a file at the bottom called uninstall.exe. Um, incorrectly spelled, but we'll forgive him for being nice enough to actually add an uninstaller. And uninstalling this is simply a matter of double-clicking that. It will uninstall this mod for you. Now, if you've installed it the manual way, you, you have to uninstall it by deleting the same files that you added. So that would be the ingfx shaders folder and would also be, if I remind myself, these four files, the D3D9 DLL, the INJFX settings H, the README and the shader FX. You'd need to delete those manually if you've installed it manually. And that's it, it is now installed. Now, if you usually run this game using the four gigabyte enabler or the um, full screen, um, mod that I showed you last week, I recommend before you do that, just run the game normally so that you get the launcher up because it will then detect your video and hardware settings and it changes your settings for you. Double check that it's got everything set. So, for example, I want mine to be windowed mode because I, I play in the, with the windowed mode. So, just double check everything's been set to your liking. Now you'll notice I've selected FX AA. Um, I believe as of 1.3, version 1.3, yeah, the FX AA is permanently disabled due to instability. Um, so he suggests using Skyrim's built-in version. So even though it's called the FX AA post-processor injector, you're going to need to turn that on. It still does all the other post-processing we discussed before, Bloom, Sharp, and etc. And then once you've set up, close that, and then start the game the way you would normally start it. If you start it from here, play. If you normally start it windowed mode, do that. And so here we are in game. And as you can see, very similar to the enhanced shaders, it does look a lot better. And you can actually turn the effects on and off using the pause key. So this is vanilla. And this is with the FX AA post processor. There you go. And you can, you can just see how much better it is. Now, if you look at the shadows, um, for example, around the barrel over there, if you look at the shadows, they're not quite as good as with the enhanced shaders. They're, they're not. Um, but they're still a lot better than the default. If I go to the default, it's still a lot better. Overall, it's just a massive um, improvement. And you may find that the performance is a little better with this. It's a little less intensive. I get slightly better performance with this mod. But as you can see, very, very nice still. Colours, very vibrant. And again, if you look at the um, the player character, it's, um, it's still a very big improvement. I'll turn it off. This is vanilla. This is with it on. The only thing that I have a problem with with this is the colours are a bit too bright for me. The red is a little bit too saturated. But that can be fixed very, very easily, so do not judge the mod by that. But as you can see, I'm off, glad to help any way I can. on. On is a massive improvement. It really is. So how do we actually change the settings? Well, if you go along again to the game folder and find a file called ingfxsettings.h and edit it, just edit in Notepad. You can change any of these settings. So for example, for me, I found it a little bit too saturated, for example. I, it's got 0 0.7 on saturation. Now zero is no change. So 0 0.7 is an increase. If I drop that slightly, if I drop it to say 0 0.5, I will reduce the saturation slightly. The same is true for the gamma and the exposure. If you remember in the last episode, when I installed windowed mode, um, one of the problems is you can't adjust the brightness. Well, you can adjust it using this, the gamma. 
And once you've set it how you like, just save and start the game again. I'd just like to end by reminding you that these mods cannot both be run at the same time. You're going to have to pick one. So try them both, see which one works for you, and then stick with that. But that brings us to the end of this video. I hope it was helpful and I hope you enjoyed it. Feel free to leave comments below, click the like button if you liked it, and until next time, have fun. <laughs>